Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Whey protein made from cow's milk is a good source of protein in terms of building muscle. Looking at this paper, bovine-derived alpha-lactalbumin exhibits cardiovascular protection against aging by ameliorating the inflammatory process in mice. It seems that it may also be good for the cardiovascular system. Let's have a look at what they found. A quick overview of the paper. Cardiovascular disease increases with age and is one of the leading causes of death. So in this study, they looked at what impact alpha-lactalbumin, one of the major bioactive proteins in milk, has on cardiovascular aging. They looked at human and rat cells in vitro and mice in vivo. Hydrogen peroxide was used to cause senescence in the in vitro model and showed that alpha-lactalbumin could alleviate senescence, inflammation, and oxidative stress. In vivo, signs of aging in the cardiovascular system were attenuated in terms of reduced senescence, as shown by SA beta gal. In summary, lactalbumin has good anti-aging potential in vitro and in vivo, and could be considered an anti-aging functional food. They started off with an in vitro study using a line of rat cells and human coronary artery endothelial cells. All the in vitro graphs I am showing in this video are from the human cell lines. They compared the number of senescent cells after adding three different concentrations of lactalbumin, one, five, and 10 milligrams per milliliter. The hydrogen peroxide caused a high level of cellular senescence, going from about 10% to about 70% which was rescued in a dose-dependent manner when alpha-lactalbumin was added, based on the percentage of SA beta-gal positive cells. Expression of other markers of senescence, such as P16, P21, and P53, showed similar results. The lactalbumin also improved oxidative stress, as measured with the DCFHDA assay. They also looked at the inflammatory cytokines produced by the cells. Pro-inflammatory interleukin-1-beta, TNF-alpha, and interleukin-6 all decreased in a dose-dependent manner, and anti-inflammatory interleukin-10 increased to above the value in the control. Now turning to the in vivo experiments. As always, when converting between mice and humans, I am making assumptions based on the data I can find on the web. The hope is to give an idea of how the times and doses involved would translate into humans. The mice were female C57 naturally aged to 20 months, which is about 58 in human terms. The study length was eight weeks, which may not sound that long, but the equivalent for a human is 20 years. They split the mice into three groups, giving them 50, 100, and 200 milligrams per kilogram of body weight of lactalbumin. Using the allometric conversion of 12.3 to 1, this gives 4.0, 8.1, and 16.2 milligrams per kilogram for a human, and 300, 607, and 1,215 milligrams for a 75 kilogram person, respectively. I could not find any supplement manufacturer who broke down the percentage of different proteins in their way, but I did find a couple of articles which gave the percentage of alpha-lactalbumin in whey protein as either 17% or 20 to 25%. The scoop size of the protein that I take is 31 grams. So if the 20% is correct, this would be around 6,200 milligrams, certainly an adequate dose. The last two numbers will depend on your source of protein, of course. But as they mentioned in the paper, one of the good points about food-derived proteins such as lactalbumin is that it is safe and available in large quantities. If you wanted to get the same dose with milk, the figure is 3.3 grams of protein for 100 milliliters of milk. So about 560 milligrams of lactalbumin. So to get to 1,215 milligrams would require 210 milliliters of milk by my calculations. Here are the results for the in vivo study. Looking at the cells from the myocardium, heart muscle cells, they saw a significant reduction in senescence in a dose-dependent manner, as shown by SA beta gal P16 and P21 expression. Improved oxidative stress, shown in malonaldehyde reduction, an increase in SOD and reduced glutathione. And reduced inflammatory markers, interleukin beta-1, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha. There are a couple of phenotypes for an aging cardiovascular system. 
One is an increase in fibrosis in the heart, which we see here. This was partly rescued by the lactalbumin. And finally, blood vessels become thicker, which leads to stiffness and higher blood pressure. Lactalbumin was shown to reduce this back to a more youthful state. I personally take whey as a source of protein to help me maintain my lean muscle mass. It's very encouraging to hear that it may also be helping with cardiovascular health at the same time. Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.